Hi everyone. Um, um, my name is Imran Belodia. Um, I'm the dean of the CLM faculty at Wits University. One of the things that we've been quite keen to do, mainly the MBA students in the business school, to get to to sort of get to engage with the business leaders of today. We, we kind of really want one to both is the capabilities uh, for our students to kind of truly understand what it's like to run uh, sort of businesses in South Africa and what it's kind of really like to run uh, businesses in the region. And I can think of no one better for us to, to launch this part of our initiative than Sisu and Kassana. No, thanks very much and good evening everyone. You know, I come from, I was born in Newcastle, in KwaZulu-Natal. My father was a little bit of an eccentric math and science teacher. I was four years old. Uh, in any case, I ended up in a boarding school somewhere in Lesotho. And so, and it was a girl's school. It was a girl's school. <laughs> that experience from a very young age taught me a couple of things. It taught me that uh, I had to be, I had to take responsibility for the actions that I take. Uh, <laughs> my parents were working, my mother was working, my dad is working. Uh, I started school at a much younger age. So that taught me a lot about just understanding what I'm capable of and taking responsibilities for my actions and that kind of thing. My mother was particularly um, concerned and always made sure we went to the best schools that the family could afford. Uh, so I think that that investment, you know, stood me in really great stead in terms of just who I am and what my whole family became. And she made no distinction between girls and girls and boys. So you had to cook, you had to wash, you had to washing, you had to do your chores, and girls had to do the gardens and so on. Then I have a sister who's was disabled, was on a wheelchair. And we always used to think my mother is really cruel because she said, you know, the fact that she's disabled, she had polio when she was three months. Um, the fact that she's disabled had nothing to do with her ability to do everything else that the other children, all of us did. And she's gone on to become a very successful woman, even disabled as it is, because, you know, she doesn't feel pity for herself. <laughs> So it's a kind of upbringing which then taught me, and she always used to say us, to us, all of us, that you know, you, you can be anything that you want to be. And because she practiced that in real life, even today, I believe I can do anything. I can do anything. So it taught me about self-awareness, but it also taught me a lot about self-management. I learned a couple of things as I went along, and, and this became clearer in my own mind, in fact, as I got to high school, that if I just worked a little bit harder than the next person, I could actually come in the top ten. Uh, if you are given a task to go and do something, you must just show up, you must do what you promise you do, or what you agreed you would do. Uh, and that's actually about self-management, uh, and just being dependable. You know, and, and this belief that we were taught that we could do anything uh, has sort of continued to drive me. So I started a firm, you know, Sizwan Company, and it was me and just one person who was a bookkeeper, secretary, PA, and so on. But, um, you know, I had this ambition that we wanted to build a big firm. And we grew the firm in, in like three years. We had seven offices in the whole country employing a lot of people. I just sort of set this target for myself uh, that when I turned 40, I was going to be out of the fair. I didn't quite know what I was going to do, but I just told myself, you know, there must be something else to do. That's where I ended up attacking. So I just applied from an advert in the, in, the, in the Sunday Times. But, you know, one thing I told myself is that I'm going, to, I'm going to understand this business. So I spent about two years completely immersing myself, going to telecom yards, speaking to technicians, and so on. Uh, and very quickly came to a conclusion that there were a lot of things which telecom could do better. It was quite clear to me that you know, there was a major restructuring that we had to do. But I mean, the company did quite well and we got listed. But after, again, over eight years, I then said, well, then what? 
Anyway, cut long story short, I ended up at first round. What I'm doing now, uh, I've started a group company as a social entrepreneur because I'm passionate about education. So um, I've started a chain of private schools uh, called Future Nation Schools. I think it's important in the space in this country for a new and different model of how we teach. There's a whole revolution taking place in education. The world has moved on in terms of how learning and teaching takes place. So, and I've said to government, I'm going to create a model, invest my family money in a new model to address a couple of things. Uh, one, to create a model that I think is suitable for Africa because, and suitable for the 21st century. I just think there's a, there's a different way. I just think there's a different way of, of how we should teach our children to become global citizens, to become critical thinkers, uh, to become proud about their origins. And all of this was for me driven by the belief that I could do anything.